May 1st, Monday, 7.45, Mountain Time 2017. If you like meteors, I'd say this week's your best shot. I actually saw one two nights ago. Just happened to glance up at the right time, and it was moving across the southern sky, headed northeast. I just caught the tail end of it. It was red with gold fragmentation. It was small, wasn't anything big enough to even report. But big enough to see. I caught maybe the last half a second of it. But here's what's going on right now above Earth. This is um, one of two that I check out, live meteor detection sites. Last night, this one peaked, as you can see down here, right before sunrise. I think I have it right here. Yeah. Peaked at around 140 per hour. And that's consistent. Well, actually, that's above what they're showing. But the time frame, that's right before sunrise, that's when they're at their peak. This here, what you're looking at is a screenshot I took uh, about an hour ago when four clipped the atmosphere at pretty much the same time. And that was from right here at this venue. But they've been averaging around 70, 80 per hour. And we're just now entering the nighttime hours again. Well, they're already in the nighttime hours. So it's going to pick up over here if it's anything like last night. And it peaked before sunrise, but it ran steady most of the night, around 100 per hour. You can come over here and listen to the meteors. The sound, it's like you're in a space capsule, space vacuum. But whenever that makes a very distinct noise, it means a meteor has been detected above the Earth. So it's a pretty cool sight, but you got to turn it off after a while. But what they're saying we're going through is... The tail, Halley's Comet, left 2,600 years ago. And probably how they know that is by counting the layers, I would suppose. I don't know how else they'll be, they would know. It passes um, by Earth every 75 years. Okay, so every layer would probably represent a year. And if they counted back 34 layers, then that would be 6, 16 BC is what they're talking about right here. They're saying that uh, the two leading meteor forecasters say there's a possibility of an actual outburst. Meteor activity could increase on the 4th when Earth grazes through the dust tail released by Halley's Comet in the year 616 BC. And then another forecaster said that it could enter the field late on uh, May 5th, which could create an outburst. So they're both saying that, that uh, an outburst is possible. But nevertheless, right now there is a hot spot, and you can listen to them both at these two, or you can listen to them at both of these websites. See, one just came in right there. And that was a fairly long duration one. Uh, didn't show up over here. This one here uh, picks up between Canada and. I think Maryland or over in the DC area. This one here is high above Europe, stretching over to probably, uh, I don't know, maybe Greenland, maybe a little farther than Greenland, and then the far eastern part of Europe. So you've got a big chunk of the northern hemisphere covered, but not entirely. But nevertheless, this picks up a lot of uh, meteors. And normally, these meteor uh, showers they could be duds, man. I don't know how many times I've gotten up and went outside and looked and didn't see anything. I saw one, like I said, two nights ago, just merely by chance. I glanced up, there it was, and it was red and gold, and it lasted about a half a second. And it was traveling eh, northeast um, from high in the southern sky. But, yeah, that's it. And you can backtrack their, their prediction, and you can see Halley's Comet has passed every 74 75 years um sometimes 76 but it did pass in 616 bc so that is correct believe it or not pretty crazy man so get up early if you want to see some between now and the 7th i think is when they're predicting peak numbers but they're looking pretty good now so that's entirely up to you and so are these quakes they're looking pretty good. The numbers are growing. It's now up to 201. The last time I checked, it was at 179. And most of these are 0, 0.0 depth, which means they're surface events.
and this is right on the Yukon line, British Columbia, Canada. Um, and this is where the river about three weeks ago started running backwards, maybe a month ago because of glacier melt. This is classic isostatic rebound, classic weight transfer. The land that has been oppressed from heavy ice, it's free. And it, yes, it was triggered. I understand by the 6.0 uh, earthquakes. There was a couple of them. I get it. I understand that. But that's what broke it free. And now you've got isostatic rebound. And there needs to, or geologists need to be up there monitoring this because the topography is changing. And it's increasing. So they've still got time to get up there if they're, out, if they're not already. This is a very unique event. So get up there with your cameras and take some pictures. Or get up early in the morning and watch some meteors. Either way, eventful, uh, eventful times we're living in. And during these uncertain times, I encourage you to be brave, be strong, be wise, be ready. Thanks for watching.